Hello and good day. This is Corey from the Box Scholar YouTube channel. Thank you for joining me today. I am going to discuss my new Bach Chorale edition here, 436 four-part chorales, the ultimate edition for performance study and sight reading. It's in progress now. I'm proofing this, so it's not for sale yet, but it will be. So when it is, you will find the link below this video. And then also I would like to discuss these books here. But before I do that, I, I want to just play for you a short chorale out of this book to show you how easy it is to read out of this new edition. This is chorale number 179. It's so beautiful. I love that chorale. It's so easy to read out of my new edition. Uh, before I discuss this and uh, these other Bach chorale editions that led me to make my edition, you might be wondering about my shirt. <laughs> Led Zeppelin, United States of America, 1977. I'm wearing this shirt not only because it's a comfortable shirt, but when I was 14 years old, I attended, uh, I believe it was either my first rock concert or one of the first rock concerts I attended at the Oakland Coliseum in California, uh, where I grew up not far from there. Uh, 14 years old, I saw Led Zeppelin. They were like the first rock concert I ever went to. Can you believe that? I, I'm trying to think who, who opened up for a bunch of other bands opened up for them. I can't even remember. I remember Judas Priest, the old Judas Priest back in 1977. They, they were almost, they weren't that well known then. They opened up for Zeppelin and Zeppelin. I can't believe that. I mean, it really shows my age. Anyway, back in my former life, high school, college, I was a big fan of rock and roll classic rock, certain types of heavy metal. I still am. So now you know another side of Box Scholar that you may not have known. Uh, so this is not blasphemy. So Box Scholar is, is, is allowed to wear a Led Zeppelin shirt if he wants to. So anyway, let's get down to the topic at hand here. So I have one, two, three, four, five. I have five editions of Box Chorales, all very different. And this is what led to my edition here that I'm featuring today. Uh, the first edition is uh, the Riemann Schneider edition here. It's very famous, the 371 Harmonized Chorales. Everyone knows this edition, or if you took music theory, you know this edition. It's, it's, it's nice for research. It, you know, it helped me to compile, uh, you know, to compile a nice list of corrals and so forth, but the reading of it is just impossible. It's just everything is crammed together. It's really hard to read, very difficult. So this can be really disregarded as, as an addition even to play on the piano. So um, we, you can just simply forget about that one. Then there's uh, the four-part corrals of J.S. Bach. Uh, with the German text of the hymns and English translations by Charles Sanford Terry, 
This is uh, a new edition of the older, I think it's a reprint of the older edition. Excellent, excellent book. This is a masterpiece of scholarship here. Uh, Charles Sanford Terry was, was a first-rate scholar in what he did. There are, I think, uh, 405 corrals, if I believe, uh, in here, and they're, they're all very accurate. They're relatively easy to read, even though they're small, because the printing is bold with the, the German and English translations here for the texts. But it's, in terms of playing them on the piano, it just, it's almost impossible. This book doesn't stay open. And, you know, you have to get something to keep the book open. So it's, it's really impractical for playing at the keyboard. But it is an excellent book, nevertheless, and I do highly recommend it. If you were uh, doing research or if you're a scholar in any way in Bach, or you, you need that book. That's excellent. Now, this is one here, Chorales Harmonized by Johann Sebastian Bach, collected and arranged in melodic order by H. Eliot Button, with a new preface by Peter Williams, published by Novello. In, uh, this is from 1985. This is currently out of print, and it's unfortunate because, in my opinion, it's the finest edition of Bach's Chorales. In fact, this is the edition that I used for preparing about 95% of my current book here, and all of Sight Reading and Harmony. 100% of Sight Reading and Harmony, the chorales came right out of this book here. And this was my main source because I really trust it. It's an excellent edition. It's from about, about 1923. As I said, it's out of print now, uh, but this is an excellent book. I think I had this in my lab library because I used it for a theory class many years ago when it used to be in print. This is excellent. There's a, it's in a certain melodic order. I think there's about 385 chorales in here. I still read out of this. I mean, they're relatively easy to read. They're, it, it's a lot easier to read than the uh, Riemann Schneider is, but nevertheless, it's not really a piano edition. It's really not meant to be a piano edition. <clears throat> then we have the 413 Chorales uh, by J.S. Bach by Christopher Charnecki. And this is the analyzed version. There are two books, there, there are two versions of this. There's one analyzed and one not analyzed. When I bought this from Amazon, I did not realize there were two versions of it. And so I happened to accidentally buy the analyzed version and then I for the longest time, I thought this was the only version there was, and then I checked and discovered that there was also the non-analyzed version. The analyzed version has these Roman numerals analyses for all the chords, and it's really a distraction to the eye. It's really, I should have bought the other one, so I'm not a big fan of this book, but even if the, even if the uh, Roman numerals were taken away, the, the, uh, there's an inconsistency to the, um, to the musical fonts, inconsistency to the layout, because there are some pages that, that where the notes are really sort of crammed together in certain chorales, like if you have to fit one chorale on one, one page like this, it's all, the notes are very close together and crammed up. And then, and then you'll have one that's not. And you can see that there is an inconsistency with this type of notation. So what I wanted to do in, okay, so I'm faced with all these additions. And it was about probably a couple of years ago that I really thought, you know, I need to make my own edition because I'm not happy with all of these. This, the Charnacki is good. It's, it's okay, it's good for the piano, but it could be a lot better uh, in terms of the layout and the manuscript and so, so forth. So I thought, you know, the only way I'm gonna do this is make my own edition, but that's not so easy because this, this takes a long time. It's not easy to write chorales out, it really is not. You can't just play it on the MIDI and it writes it out. It doesn't, it's not that easy, you have to write all the soprano, alto, tenor, bass singly 
you have to do those all manually. You can't just play it and it writes it out. So it took me a whole entire year, even longer than that, longer than an entire year of doing nothing but writing out corrals. <laughs> now I'm still proofing them in this book here. So I wanted to find something that was better. I wanted to find a better way and a better format and I think I have found that because the consistency, if you, if you glance through this book, you can see a consistency of note spacings. The, the notes, they're, they're not crammed together on one page and spaced out on the next page, or uh, they're all re really easy to read, as I, should, as I demonstrated when I played this uh, Corral number 179. So there's, there's a special, consistency to this that I spent a long time planning and trying to really hone in on that and perfect that. And the table of contents itself is 15 pages long. And so when you go through the table of contents, you will see a, a perfect ordering of the corrals in terms of the, um, it's ordered, it's rough, it's ordered similar to the way that the Riemann Schneider orders them, actually. And the Riemann Schneider edition, you know, the one that everything is crammed together, it's H I No, actually uh, No, I thought it was alphabetical, but I guess it's not. No, it's not really alphabetical. For some reason I thought it was alphabetical, but it's not. So anyway, when I, I wanted to create an edition that was everything yeah, oh Charnecki's is that this is alphabetical okay but there's but I wanted more a more consistency with the way that they're organized so so I have you, you, you'll see when you get it you see how the table of contents is organized and how you have one corral tune or hymn tune and then below that you have whatever, how many, three or four corrals that belong in that category. And you can see, so, so that you'll, it's hard to explain here, but you'll see when you get your edition that it's the way that it's organized. So I wanted to have something that was organized that way, organized correctly, not by BWV number. I did not want to order by BWV number because that's, it's just makes, it messes everything up that way. And that's what this edition did here. Uh, the Luke Dons edition here, a new comprehensive edition arranged by BWV Catalog. It's very scholarly. It's, it has all the tables and indexes that you would ever want and ever need. It has the German texts, all the corrals. It has 420 corrals in it, more than any other book to date. Uh, except mine has 436 now, and I'll explain that in a minute, how I got those. But this, it, it's very hard to read. It's very small print. It's not really something that's, that's enjoyable to read at the piano. This is a book for scholars. So if you're doing research, if you're a musicologist, music historian, music scholar, then this is a good book. But otherwise, it's not a good piano book. I wanted to create something that was good for the piano. So, one thing that I wanted to avoid was eight and a half by 11 pages. You see, these two, the Tarnecki and the Dawn, are both eight and a half by 11 inches. This is the standard American letter size. It's called American letter. And this is the size, I think they only have it in North America or maybe just a, maybe just the United States. This is a not a good a size page to use. It's not good at all. Most music books use what what is nine inches by twelve inches. So when you when you look at so nine by twelve, if if you look at these, see how much bigger this one is than this one? See, so this is eight and a half by 11, that's American letter size. This, and, and so is the Charnecki. This is letter size. This is standard concert size. I think they call it, in, in the Sibelius program, they call it concert size. 
this allows you to get bigger writing and, and to get longer lines and it's much easier to read. So I wanted something that was nine by 12, spiral bound, had the corrals ordered in a certain way and was highly legible at the piano. And that I think I've accomplished here. So I'm just proofing this and pretty soon it will be ready. So I'm really happy about this edition. When I sit here at the piano, I can read all of these easily, much easier than any of these other editions that I've been working from. So uh, this is the uh, sort of the origins or genesis of my uh, Corral book here that um, I know you will love it when you get it. It's great for an all purpose book for sight reading, for uh, musical analysis, and this is it's just a it's a, just such a great book. I am so glad that I spent a whole year out of my life doing nothing but doing but making this book. You know, this was the only project I worked on in terms of books. Uh, almost nothing else. I just dove right into this and spent probably a whole almost entire year of doing nothing but this book. So it will pay off. So I think I've done enough talking today. Uh, thank you for joining me and until we meet again.